In this lesson, we will focus on how to factor trinomials with a leading coefficient of 1, as well as those different from 1. When the leading coefficient is 1, our first step is to find two numbers that multiply to give the constant term and at the same time add up to the coefficient of the middle term. In this example, the constant term is 18 and the coefficient of the middle term is negative 11. So, we need to find two numbers that multiply to give 18 and add up to negative 11. To easily find these numbers, we start by listing the factor pairs of 18. 1 and 18. 2 and 9. 3 and 6. We also have the negative factor pairs, which can be obtained by changing the sign of these factor pairs. Now we have a list of all pairs that multiply to give 18. Next, we need to figure out which pair adds up to negative 11. Let's add them to find out. 1 plus 18 equals 19. 2 plus 9 equals 11. 3 plus 6 equals 9. Negative 1 plus negative 18 equals negative 19. Negative 2 plus negative 9 equals negative 11. We have found the numbers. They are negative 2 and negative 9, right? There is no need to check the remaining factor pair as only one pair satisfies both conditions. Therefore, the trinomial is factored as x minus 2 times x minus 9. To check if our answer is correct, we just need to foil this. x times x is x squared. x times negative 9 is negative 9x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 9 is 18. Then, combine like terms. This is the original trinomial, so our answer is correct. In the next example, the leading coefficient is different from 1. What should we do in such a case? When the leading coefficient is not 1, the first step is to check if we can factor it out. In this case, it is negative 1, and we can factor it out easily. Simply change the sign of each term and place the negative sign in front of the parentheses. Now, the expression inside the parentheses has a leading coefficient of 1, so you can follow the same steps as in the previous example. Please pause the video and give it a try. First, find two numbers that multiply to give negative 30 and add up to negative 7. List the factor pairs of negative 30. 1 and negative 30. 2 and negative 15. 3 and negative 10. 5 and negative 6. Change the signs of these factor pairs to obtain the other half. Now, all these pairs multiply to give negative 30, but only one of them adds up to negative 7. Which one is it? Add the pairs to find out. It is the pair 3 and negative 10, right? Therefore, these are the two numbers we are looking for, and the expression inside the parentheses is factored as x plus 3 times x minus 10. Do not forget the negative sign at the front. Therefore, this is the answer. You can also check this, first by foiling x plus 3 times x minus 10, and then distributing the negative sign. In this example, we were able to factor out the leading coefficient, but this is not always the case. In the next example, we cannot factor out 12 as it is not a common factor of both 23 and 5. So, what should we do in such a case? In such cases, start by multiplying the leading coefficient by the constant term. In this example, the leading coefficient is 12, the constant term is 5, and their product is 60. Then, find two numbers that multiply to give this product and add up to the coefficient of the middle term. So, we need to find two numbers that multiply to give 60 and add up to 23. List the factor pairs of 60. 1 and 60. 2 and 30. 3 and 20. If you notice, 3 and 20 add up to 23, right? So, these are the two numbers we are looking for. While listing the factor pairs, if you find a pair that works, you do not need to continue listing the remaining pairs since only one pair satisfies both conditions. Moreover, if you can mentally figure out the two numbers, there is no need to make a list. You can proceed with that. By the way, because we are multiplying A by C here, this method is called the AC method. The next step is to split the middle term using the two numbers we found. We can rewrite 23x as the sum of 3x and 20x. If we add these terms back together, we get the original 23x, so we are not changing the value of the equation. 
the other terms stay the same. Now, we factor this by grouping. Group the first two terms together and the last two terms together, then factor out the greatest common factor from each group. In the first group, the GCF is 3x, which is one of the factors of this group. If you cannot figure it out in your head, first find the GCF of the coefficients and variables separately. To find the GCF of the coefficients, list their factors. The factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, right? The factors of 3 are 1 and 3. Now it is easy to note that the GCF of the coefficients is 3, right? The GCF of x squared and x is x. So, the GCF of 12x squared and 3x is 3x. To find what goes in the parentheses, divide each term by the GCF. 12x squared divided by 3x is 4x. 3x divided by 3x is 1. So, the other factor of this group is 4x plus 1. In the second group, the GCF is 5, which is one of the factors of this group. To find what goes in the parentheses, divide each term by 5. 20x divided by 5 is 4x. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So, the other factor of this group is 4x plus 1. When you factor by grouping, if the factors inside the parentheses are the same for both groups, then you are on the right track. Otherwise, you need to go back and check your previous steps. Next, factor out the common factor for both groups, which is 4x plus 1. This leaves behind 3x plus 5 as the other factor. Therefore, this is the answer. Let's work on one more example like this that's a little bit more challenging. Notice that 9, 75, and negative 54 share 3 as their greatest common factor. So, we can factor out 3 before proceeding to the next step. In fact, a general tip when factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient different from 1 is to start by factoring out any greatest common factor, especially if the numbers are large. This simplifies the factoring process. Now, you can factor the trinomial in the parentheses using the AC method. Feel free to pause the video and give it a try. First, multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term, which equals negative 54. Then, find two numbers that multiply to give negative 54 and add up to 25. Let's do this mentally. We know that 2 times 27 equals 54, right? But if we make 2 negative, they multiply to give negative 54. And when we add them, we get 25, right? So, you have found the two numbers. The next step is to split 25x using these numbers, which can be written as negative 2x plus 27x, right? The other terms stay the same, and 3 comes along for the ride. Now, factor the expression in the parentheses by grouping. Group the first two terms together and the last two terms together, then factor out the greatest common factor from each group. In the first group, the GCF is x. To find what goes in the parentheses, divide each term by x. 3x squared divided by x is 3x. Negative 2x divided by x is negative 2. In the second group, the GCF is 9. To find what goes in the parentheses, divide each term by 9. 27x divided by 9 is 3x. Negative 18 divided by 9 is negative 2. Notice that the factors inside the parentheses are the same for both groups, indicating that you are on the right track. Do not forget the 3. Next, factor out the common factor for both groups. This leaves behind x plus 9 as the other factor. And we have 3 at the front. Therefore, this is the answer. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.